Captain Power and the soldiers of the future. Welcome to Power Base, Cypher. Nice. Welcome back to the Tide Urium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the Captain Power Base. This is the Power Base itself, the big mammy jammy, a place that's for the toy line. And I have to say I'm highly impressed. This is one of the best play sets with some of the most awesome play features that I've seen in any playset. And I've been reviewing a lot of vintage play sets lately and seeing this one and what all it does, it's very impressive. Filled with electronics that are satisfying, filled with a lot of different play features. And of course, it works excellent as a display. And we're going to talk about all this coming up. So let's take a good look at this box. Of course, it's a big play set, so it's gonna have a big box, and getting it all in frame is a challenge. Here we go with all of the features. Down here, it shows the laser lights so you can interact with the TV. Uh, it shows the whole base and the art there. You can see right here, there's a, a great picture of the backside, the actual base itself, and what's going on in there. And then it, it interacts with the other toys. So uh, the box is big. The box shows what it's supposed to do. It's It's got the red all over it, but the back is kind of inverted again, an inverted box, and sort of a line drawing with red on the background. So this is glossy and the rest of it, and it's kind of flat on the back, but it's huge. It is just massive. And of course, it probably commanded a pretty massive price even back in the day. So starting out, I have taken some liberties of how I've set this up. And the thing is that this isn't properly assembled, but it fits all on the table. I can properly assemble when it's flipped around and fit it all on the table just right. But the thing about it is that it's just so big and it's a bit awkward. I can see why you keep the location of this place secret. If Dredd ever got his hands on all this stuff. The nickel tour comes later. You said you had something vital to discuss. Oh yes, I did want to say that I, I kind of like this. I liked laser tag the most back in the day, but this actually makes me like the the electronics and how their laser tag system works so much better than what laser tag did. So here's a size comparison to Castle Grayskull. So it's not massively huge, and yeah, my Grayskull is just like a parts Castle Grayskull. I just keep around for size comparisons, but. When you, everyone knows the Castle Grayskull size, for the most part, so you kind of have an idea, it's about the same size, but it spreads out in a different way than the Grayskull does, and it has way different features. Looking at the front of this, you have a really good mountain type of base, and it's, it's etched in really well, and it's got a nice paint job all over it. You can kind of tell it has a, a wash to it. But one problem is the top piece doesn't look like it matches the main base because of the way they kind of uh, faded the paint. But I'll give it a pass, and, and I was thinking it might have been faded, but every single one of these sets looks about the same like that. Then going down, you've got a place for these uh, figures, and as you can see, these pieces here shoot out when we do the big party trick. So uh, that is scary when it comes to all this plastic that could possibly break, like the guns and stuff. And then down lower, we have so much more detail. And it, they've done a really good job of the detailing and lining up the pieces that blow out that look really good. It just looks like all that looks right until you blow it up and see how it works. So that's really cool. That's a whole lot of fun. And it's kind of on this tripod type of system here to where you have over here this sort of another cannon that you could put a figure in. And uh, this piece here is kind of like a radar. Something's left on. This is kind of like a radar and it's supposed to wind and work. A lot of these winding functions don't work in this piece here. In fact, every one that I've seen, I don't know one that actually still works unless there's some trick to it that I'm missing. I just don't see any of them working properly. So looking at it from the back side, this is where the nickel tour comes in. This is where all of the fun is going to happen for the most part. I think this is best for the displaying, is displaying the base and them sitting in there. And then you can see it all set up and it's it looks a lot better and it actually is designed to be displayed like this because you see the rails are on the inside versus the rails would be not doing anything really if you had it the other direction. So over here we have the 
uh, landing pad or the takeoff pad or the launching pad, which is really cool if your ladder is straight and a lot of cool stuff. We're going to break this down and go step by step, piece by piece right now. So looking at this launching pad here, there's a lot going on with it. First of all, you have this yellow ladder and you have this, it's a gunner station, which I, I know Tank doesn't need his gun if he's got a gunner station. So that is really cool. This gunner station can be moved and put pretty much anywhere on the set if you would like. Uh, it just clips on to this. And then there's a lot of places you could put the ladder, but I find you could actually just make the ladder work anywhere on it also. So there's a lot of different variability to this if you want. Of course, your ship can take off from there and that's good, that's going to work. But there's more that this thing also does. Of course, this thing does indeed roll and you could roll your ship out to launch if that's a thing that you want to do. Flipping it over on the side, you can see that it's actually connected by sliding it together. And you could have this as a freestanding piece also by folding these down. And you have a freestanding launching pad and an extra vehicle. And there's a lot more things you can do with this. You, you can connect uh, the other part of the gun on the other tower that connects into this also. But we'll show that here in just a little bit when we get to the tower. Uh, looking at this Land Rover itself, not too much, not too great of a toy. It's not like you're going to have a whole lot of fun, but it's adding an extra vehicle. In fact, this adds two extra vehicles to your lineup. And in there you have a steering column, a steering wheel, no weaponry on this, but you do have all of the stickers all over it. Looking like you got a lot going on with it. And here it is from the back and the side. So that's actually kind of fun to have an extra vehicle that would work. Next up, and most arguably the, the the most annoying way to film this part of the playset here is this tower. And I, the first time I saw this, I thought that is just ridiculously crazy. But anyway, it's it's connected to the base right here, like the other one was, which I really didn't show that. And you could move it around, adjust it. You could tuck it away for storage. I didn't really connect it because I didn't know I wasn't going to leave it connected for very long. But it's pretty cool. It's got the cabin power symbol on the connector. But this thing here is actually really interesting. Uh, of course, the wind-up mechanism doesn't work right in any of them, but you can put a figure in here, and uh, you got some stickers on the side. Uh, it doesn't really do anything like electronics-wise, but this radar is part of the game where it would kind of... Uh, you would detect a hit because of the light. So... It's strange, you could actually shoot it and hit it right and then and then hurt yourself. That's, that's kind of strange. Down here we have this yellow railing, which is cool. But of course, if you display it from the other side, the whole base from the other side, this railing is on the inside, so it doesn't look quite right. I think this railing and the way it's designed, this whole part of the playset is to be used when displaying it from the inside, like we're looking at it right now. So when you pop this piece off, you have another vehicle like a little Land Rover. Now this vehicle would be kind of like an auto scout type of vehicle. It's not an actual vehicle that a driver would drive, but it looks kind of cool. It has two guns that go with it and one's kind of loose. Uh, I need to put some polish on that, huh? Polish that up so it sticks better. But yeah, it gets the job done, but it has its own party trick. Here's in the bottom. Not as many stickers as the other one, not as big as the other one, not as impressive as the other one but it still does something cool. You remove the top part and you can connect it into here. And once you connect it into here, then you actually have another little Land Rover, which that's kind of cool too. And if you want, of course, you could put, you could put your tank figure in there or Captain Power or one of the other figures, but I just kind of have Tank who took the steering wheel column with him. You put tank in there you can drive him around or you could you can do another configuration you can put this on here it works the same way and just drive around with it so definitely definitely some different configurations that work really well that's a whole lot of fun now getting down into the dirty and the nitty-gritty of this playset 
this is the main part of the base. Now, I've, I've taken everything else off so we can see all of this and we can interact with it. And so from this part, we're gonna be interacting with just this main base. So there's a couple of cool things. First off, there is where all the electronics is up top. Kicks on right there. And there, there's the gun. It would be shooting a very satisfying shot like that. You can see the scoring right here as it show up. We've got 20 points. So the individual vehicles get five points. This gets 20 points. So it's gonna take more shots to destroy a base than a ship, of course. Coming up top here, you pull up and remove this mountain piece. And when you do that, that's just uh, a cover. Then you actually have this, this gun here. It is the, the electronics with it. Extremely loud, extremely loud. And you switch it from room I don't know if it's showing up. There it is. It's showing up as loud as it is. I might have to mute this whole segment, but you can see it on the walls. That's, that's how bright the light is. That's part of the satisfying factor is that the light, you actually see it. You never see the laser tag or the photon so much. That's one of the other things that we're about to blow up. So this is going to be a little tricky to get this shot. So we're going to, we're going to try this. We're going to blow this dread thing up here. Now you can see how it, it got shot twice. Be ready. We're about to blow it up and Dred's gonna blow. Well, that was pretty satisfying. Okay, so we are going to blow this base up now. We're gonna use this and push the button and shoot. Wow, that's pretty satisfying too. There's more. Wow. And then at the end, it's not so much uh, destruction of the base, but it's more of a rumble feature. Destroyed, it kind of rumbles this, but let's see if we can get that to look good. So I really didn't do a whole lot, but the chairs kind of rumble a little bit, but I guess you have to have it in there just right. But anyway, that's a lot of fun. Now, in order to reset all of the electronics, you have to push in each of these pieces here. These, I guess you could call them uh, the actuators. What, what would you call these pieces? I'm sure the instructions had a specific word for them. And then you put back all of the parts and pieces like so, rebuild this guy. A lot of fun, but um, my kids and I had a lot of fun with this because they don't have stuff like this. Like this day and age, this kind of stuff's not getting made. These kinds of toys just don't exist. And I don't think there's a market for them for kids big enough to command it on the toy aisle. Although uh, they do this kind of stuff in video games all day. But in real life, I think it's a lot more satisfying. So this has been the Captain Power Power Base. I think it's one of the greatest play sets ever made. Uh, is it as good as the Terradrome? Well, I don't know. Terradrome didn't have electronics in it. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Electronics are still working in this bad boy 35 years later, something along those lines, 1987, 33 years later. It is a lot of fun. There's lots of options, a lot of playability, a lot of things you can do with it. And as a kid of the 80s, I would have loved to have had this. I didn't even know it existed until sometime earlier this year. And I'm glad I found it. I'm glad I got my hands on it. Hope you like this. Like, subscribe, Twitter, your hanger out. A real orange. I haven't seen a real orange in five years. <laughs> cool water, warm soil, clean air. <laughs>